The name Jonah means dove. It is a short yet powerful book in the Bible. It consists of 48 verses, of which we will share all of them in our adult Sunday school class today. Also, the book of Jonah, the story of Jonah, it's like David and Goliath. Even people who don't know the Bible, they know the story. <coughs> Let's hear God's word in the book of Jonah. May it change our lives. Amen. The word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim it, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed the fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Lord, may you richly bless this reading of your holy word. When I am not doing a series, I generally follow the lectionary. The lectionary is a three-year cycle of Bible readings. An Old Testament reading, a piece from the Psalms, a New Testament reading, and a letter. And, and, and one of the letters, one of the epistles. Every three years, once every three years, the book of Jonah comes up. I believe this is God's appointment. Because recently there's been some conversation about foreign nations. And I just want to go to God's Word and see what God's Word will teach me. I don't want to listen to men, and I'm tired of the news. I want to go to God, and that's what I believe I've done, and I want to share it with you. If there ever was a foreign place deserving criticism, this is it. Yet God loves Nineveh. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people living in spiritual darkness, not to mention all the animals. Shouldn't I feel sorry for such a great city? Now, there have been recent descriptions of other places that have made national news. I have a word from the Lord for us. Where you start matters less than where you end up. Where you end up is what matters. This is out of a good Christian biblical commentary. Pagans to Jonah were the worst kind of human garbage. Not even fit to pollute the good earth by living on it. They were the untouchables. And that God should take an interest in them was unthinkable. Assyria was an idolatrous, proud, and ruthless nation bent on world conquest. They were ruthless, nasty people who would stop at nothing to get their way. They would stop at nothing, I don't need them now, would stop at nothing to get their way. They were gods. They were terrible people 
And Jonah couldn't stand even the thought of it. You want me to go where? It's like God says, go to New York. He says, I'm, I'm out of here. And he heads to L.A. Where you start matters less than where you end up. Where you end up is what matters. Even Jesus. Stay with me. This is another sermon. Matthew 15, 26. It isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. He was calling to a Canaanite woman. He was calling her a dog. 1527, yes, Lord, she replied, but even dogs are permitted to eat crumbs that fall from the master's table. Woman, Jesus said to her, your faith is great. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed instantly. Different commentaries treat that differently. Some say Jesus said it with a twinkle in his eye when he called her a dog. He gave her the whole story, though, and blessed her richly. Again, that's a sermon for another day. God calls Jonah. You want me to go where and to who? Jonah goes the opposite way. But that doesn't make the call or God go away. You know the story? He gets on the ship. <laughs> Sailors get religion. You know. My mother, if you went through money, she says, you're spending it like a drunken sailor. You know, I mean, sailors are not known as religious people. <laughs> they find God and they come to know the Lord. The sailors get religion. God gets Jonah's attention. The sailors are interested in being righteous. Jonah gets new instructions, a second chance. Jonah follows the simple instructions. Forty days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. He's Johnny one note. He preaches the message God tells him to give. The Ninevites, imagine that. The Ninevites respond. God is merciful and doesn't destroy the city. God answers the prayers of those who call on them. And they all live happily ever after. Except that's not the story. It's not the case. Jonah is miserable. Jonah is waiting for the city to be destroyed. He goes on some, gets on some high ground and he wants to see the fireworks. 40 days from now, and then the will be destroyed. So he gets on some high ground, he's waiting to watch the fireworks. So it's, you know, God says, He's merciful to Jonah. It's going to get awful hot just waiting for me to blow up the city. So he puts a plan with a big leaf over Jonah. And he's so relieved. Oh, it's nice in this shade. God gives it to him for a day. Next day, God takes it away from Jonah. Takes it away. And Jonah's very upset. My plan is gone. And you know, God, God says to, to Jonah, are you upset about that plan? Jonah says, very upset. And God says, I'm okay. You're worried about a plant. I'm worried about the people. You're worried about this little thing that you didn't even create. I'm worried about these people over here, which by the way, I did. Help us, Jesus. God wants to expand Jonah from his little world where he's upset about a plant that gave him shelter, that gave him shade for a day. And God wants to expand his world to make it a little bigger than the world that Jonah is living in. There's four things that I'd like to share. The Bible gives us grace and truth. There's four pieces of grace and truth that I can offer you today from the book of Jonah. These, this grace and truth applies to Jonah, and it applies to each of us, especially today in the world we live in. Grace and truth number one, God is with Jonah wherever he goes. 
Don't matter where you go, God's going to be there. Grace and truth is uh, God is with Jonah wherever he goes. In the belly of the fish, Jonah starts talking to God real seriously. And get my glasses. All right. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. God is with Jonah wherever he goes. Jonah 2, verse 9. Salvation comes from the Lord. Whether you're on the boat in the, on the rough seas or whether you're in the belly of a fish, your salvation comes from God. Second bit of grace and truth. Jonah gets a second chance. God gives second chances. Amen? Amen. I missed it the first time. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. Get up and go to that great city of Nineveh. It would be like God saying to me, go to Boston and preach the gospel. You know? Get up and go to that great city of Nineveh. Number three, grace and truth. There is repentance. I've got great news. In life, we can change. In life, we can change. There is change. The Ninevites, imagine that. The Ninevites change. It would be like Boston, like saying, we'll play by the rules from now on. You know, that was a joke. There is change in life. In life, we can change. Even in the lights. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is the story of Joseph. Judah, his brother, throws him in a pit. They want to come, no, let's make money off him. Throws him in a pit. Sells him into slavery. Read the rest of the Bible. Judah is now in front of Joseph, who's a ruler of the land. And Judah is pleading for his little brother Jenna, little brother Benjamin. Lock me up instead. It killed my father when he lost Joseph. It almost killed my father when he lost Joseph. It will kill him if he loses Benjamin. Lock me up instead. The brother who sold him down the river is now pleading for his other brother's life. That's Repentance. Even Ninevites can change. Even Judah can change. Even God changes in this book of the Bible. Even God's plan changes. Because these Ninevites who don't know the difference between right and wrong, they're seeking the Lord. Grace and truth in the book of Jonah. God is with us. God is with Jonah wherever he goes. God is with us wherever we go. Jonah gets a second chance. God is a God of second chances for us. There is repentance. And repentance means, it just means turning. It means you turn to God. And you say, you got to help me. You come to the end of yourself. And you ask God for help. Being fed up with yourself sometimes is a great Place to start. Grace and truth in the book of Jonah. The last thing. God cares. God cares. More than Jonah. Often. Very often. More than you and I. And Jonah is angry at God's compassion. God is disappointed in Jonah's lack. You're worried about a plant. You're worried about a little plant here and gone quickly. You didn't even create it. How about the 120,000 people? And many commentators think that they were just the children. The 120,000, they're just kids. God is saying here, how about the kids, Jonah? Don't you care even about the kids? 
in the animals that I created. God cares. And God wants us to care too. And God is willing to wait. I recently came across this story. Uh, it's two minutes and 50 seconds long. It was shown on CBS News on, uh, on January 12th. It's about a terrible injustice that occurred and a group of young people who woke up and wanted to do something about it. Something just to, uh, shut off the lights and I'm going to show you uh, two minutes and 50 seconds about a group of young people here. the great civil rights leader who inspired so many. Steve Hartman has met a couple marking the day with one small but meaningful step. At the Mount Airy Resort in the Poconos of Pennsylvania, Reverend Gilbert Caldwell and his wife Grace are arriving for their second honeymoon. We're here, we're here, we're here. They were greeted warmly. Oh, how are you? A sharp contrast to their first visit 60 years earlier. In 1957, they were married in North Carolina, then drove eight hours only to be turned back for being black. How did they put it? Did they give you a reason? First, they pretended I didn't have a reservation, where I actually brought a copy. And then, of course, they said, but if we said yes, our guests would be very unhappy. They had to stay at a black-owned hunting lodge instead. Men with these big guns. <laughs> Not what you were planning on for your honeymoon? <laughs> Not what we were planning on. <laughs> Prodded partly by that experience, Gill immersed himself in the civil rights movement, working side by side with Martin Luther King Jr. Today, he speaks about the movement, which is how he ended up at Bear Tavern Elementary in Titusville, New Jersey last year. He told the honeymoon story, as he'd done a hundred times before. But for whatever reason, this group of fifth graders really took it to heart. At the end of the story, I was like, that's just terrible. It was really heartbreaking. Just because it's just so wrong. I feel like this is the worst thing that someone could do to someone. Even months after the Caldwell's visit, kids like Emily Eshelman are still this affected. You feel bad for them that they had to go through that? A ton. A ton. Which is why each fifth grader wrote a letter to Mount Airy. One said, the Caldwells made me think about not only standing up for myself, but standing up for others and fixing mistakes that were made in the world. In closing, the kids requested an all expense paid honeymoon redo, which they got. It makes me feel really good inside because we know that even though we're just kids, we made an impact on the world. It was really magnificent to know that kids cared that much. Oh, the rug feels so nice. I should mention that the original Mount Airy was torn down years ago. What a beautiful place. This is a new building with new owners who were just so impressed with the kids, they wanted to help make it right. Maybe was this worth waiting 60 years for? Obviously, <laughs> this does not make up for decades of racial injustice. But it's a step and a sign that we can get there. Where we end up is much more important than where we begin. God wants to expand Jonah's world, and God wants to expand our world as well. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the story of Jonah. We thank you for the way that you care so much for a hurting world. <coughs> And we are people, in small and in big ways, Lord, may we be a part of the kingdom of God. It is in your name we pray, Jesus. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Thank you.